In Super Mario 3D World, enemies can sometimes behave in some very unique ways if they're upside down. Today, I'll show you the strangest things I've come across by trying to make every enemy and a bunch of objects upside down. In the intro cutscene for Super Bell Hill, you see the Goombas just flying away. Why did they go up there? Why does gravity work like this? They didn't come back down. Around this part of the pipe, I saw some weird flickering shadows. So I switched to camera mode and tried looking up here. And what are these Goombas doing up here? The look on their face is just like, what, what, do you see something strange? I never thought that I'd see a Goomba here, and this is such a beautiful picture to take in Super Mario 3D World. I'm so glad that the camera feature was added to this game so we can see great moments like this. This is what game modding was made for, and this is why I created my YouTube channel. Even though the rabbits were set to be upside down in spotlight, they show up right side up in the actual game, and this is what happens for some enemies. And then, I got to the flagpole. And the more you look at it, the stranger it gets. The yellow tip of the flagpole is at the bottom, the base of the flagpole is up high, and the red Mario flag is at the top. But the M is upside down, so it's now a red W flag. Where are you even supposed to grab the flag? You could let me know in a comment if you'd first try going for the top or the bottom of the flag. I tried walking into the bottom part first because that makes sense to me, this is where you normally grab the flagpole, and usually if you're close enough to the flagpole then it sucks you in, but that didn't work. So I tried diving into the flagpole, but that also didn't work. I thought maybe if I could jump and reach the bottom of the flagpole that I'd get a 10,000 point pole grab, but that wasn't working. When I tried getting closer and jumping, I actually started sliding down the side of the goal pole like it was a wall and Mario was getting ready to do a wall jump. I never thought Mario would slide down the goal flag like that. I wasn't sure if you could grab the flag, so I tried getting it from the top. My angle wasn't great, but I managed to slide along the side of what's normally the base of the goal pole, and that still wasn't a pole grab. I was trying to do a wall jump off the pole and climbing up the tree and jumping to the pole, but all in vain. Eventually, I did a spin jump to the very top part of the flag, Mario poofs to the bottom of the flag, and instead of sliding down the pole, Mario slides up the pole, and he's floating up in the air during the course clear message. In World 1-2, the Koopas are another example of an enemy that would just show up normally even if you put them upside down, but the pipe was looking a little weird. If you crouched, you can get under the pipe, but if you let go of the crouch button, you can't stand up because the pipe blocks you from standing up, and jumping doesn't get you into the pipe either. I went onto the top of the pipe and I was ready to press ZL to get into the pipe. What will it look like when Mario enters a pipe like this? And Mario would just crouch. He can't enter the pipe like this. I was trying to move around, I was crouching repeatedly, but Mario can't enter the top down pipe when it's rotated around like this. I reloaded the game with the pipe now at a different angle instead of being rotated 180 degrees, hoping that this would work and Mario would be able to get into this pipe. But when I crouch here, Mario just slides down the pipe. I was trying this again when suddenly, Mario goes down the pipe. If you press the ZL button again while you're sliding down, Mario goes into the pipe. His going down the pipe animation is exactly what you'd expect, and the pipe that brings him into the cave is also very normal. Let's have a look at that. Whether the Koopas are said to be upside down or at angles, they appear normally once you load up the game. But the interesting thing about the Goombas is that they appear on the ceiling now, and they walk along the ceiling. They can actually defeat Mario if he walks into them. Ah, it's the famous Bat Goombas in Koopa Troopa Cave, known for hanging upside down and sucking blood out of the victims. I made a green star upside down to see what it would look like, and its rotation was pretty weird to me. And more ceiling Goombas! And the cool thing is, you could actually defeat the ceiling Goombas with your Fire Flower power-up. I was wondering if Mario could defeat a ceiling Goomba by jumping up at it, or jumping up and using ground pounds, but it turns out that the ceiling Goombas are the ones that defeated Mario. Oh, no. I saw a ceiling Goomba in a spot where there were breakable blocks nearby, and I was wondering how the Goomba would behave if we got rid of the blocks above it. Would it float up, or would it just float in the air? And it turns out, the Goomba just floats there in the air. Maybe this passage is too narrow and the Goomba can't float up. Mario, being a tourist at the Koopa Troopa Cave, had to take a few snapshots of him next to a ceiling Goomba as a memory. It's not every day that you're next to a ceiling Goomba. Even though the first ground pound hurt Mario when he passed by the ceiling Goomba, 
This second one with Little Mario actually managed to take out the ceiling Goomba. I was surprised to see that the Goomba stack wasn't rotated at all. I tried rotating the Goomba stack in several different ways in Spotlight, but the Goomba stack would always show up as upright when I loaded the actual game. When the Goomba is at a slight angle instead of completely upside down, it ends up starting in the air instead of the ceiling. And every time it jumps up when it notices you, it goes higher and higher until it reaches the ceiling. So, we get to see a young air Goomba grow up into a ceiling Goomba. Ah, they grow up so fast. The last time I saw you, you were only up to here. So let's just take this pipe to the final area. Here we are, let's head on to this flag. And this time the flag is just rotated, but it isn't raised up vertically. Mario jumps above the plant pot here and he gets 200 points instantly teleports below the level, slides somewhere, and the camera pans into the ground, where we can just see Mario's feet at the top of the screen, and we get a course clear message. I never thought I'd be seeing that message from down here. Does anything look wrong with this picture to you? Well, let's slide down this tree. Now, I'm wall sliding down the tree instead of grabbing it. If you jump onto this tree, you can grab it, and you can keep going up past the roots where the tree normally goes. And when you slide down, you can stop on the roots here and stand on it. What a nice platform this is that you can stand on. Some of the movement around the base of the tree is a little weird when it comes to grabbing and jumping off of the tree. The tree that's normally on the left here was rotated vertically, but it wasn't raised up, so that's why we can't see the tree, because right now it is sticking down into the level. This piranha plant just pops out of the ground. That one was at a weird angle, and some of them look strange, but they become normal once you get close to them. I made these cloud platforms upside down, and they work as you might expect. The bottom part is now solid, and you fall through the top part, and that makes climbing up this level a bit more difficult. I made this tower upside down, and I was hoping to get up to the cloud, but my cat swipes that normally bring up this tower weren't working. But then the cat swipes did work, so I just kept swiping, and then I climbed up the tower. And I want you to guess right now, what do you think is going to happen when Mario goes into this cloud? How is this upside down cloud going to shoot Mario when he goes into the cloud? Oh, and look at that piranha plant in the background. And here we go! The cloud gets ready, and it fires Mario up. I actually thought it would shoot us downward, but still bring us to the right area. And it's funny that we go the opposite way of where the cannon is facing, because the cannon is facing down on the cloud right now. When we make it into the cloud part of the level, the dash panels are upside down, these piranha plants start popping out because they're upside down, and this next cloud platform is upside down, so we fall back down to the level. Mario takes on the piranha plant boss, and he can take it out without any problems. I was curious what a sideways goal pole would be like, so let's see. I'm guessing grabbing the yellow part isn't going to work, but let's try it. When I jumped onto the white part of the goal pole, I realized that the flag is up here and it's rotated sideways. I wanted to do a jump and a dive into where I thought the pole would normally be, and that made Mario grab the pole. He slides across the pole, and then he floats up into the sky with the flag fluttering inside him. What a great course clear this is. Alright, you all know what is coming up next. Here's a sneak peek of Plessy's Plunging Falls before we load up the level. I don't know if this will work because some characters work fine upside down, and other characters just show up normally, so let's see. The level starts, and I am so glad that Plessy is upside down. Let's hop onto Plessy. Oh, we're upright, and we're way up here suddenly. What's going to happen after we close that text box? Wait, why are we running this way? Oh, okay, we're, we're going the right way now. Uh, are you okay, Plessy? This looks a bit off. As you might know, Plessy isn't normally supposed to swim in the water like this, and things are looking a bit strange. As we head down the river, I try to make it into this hole, and we continue on. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the controls are inverted for some reason, so I'm getting flashbacks to my video where I made the level Plessy's Plunging Falls backwards, which was one of the hardest things that I have ever done in this game. We get to the part of the level with all of the bends, and I have to take the side with the bends because I wouldn't be able to take the waterfall shortcut because dash panels don't work right now. It's kind of weird that they're not working, it's not like we're doing anything strange with the game. So I have to make it through these bends on Plessy with inverted controls. I found that holding my controller upside down, as well as yelling loudly while I was approaching a corner, was a good strategy. 
and we make the final jump down the waterfall, reaching the end of the level. And once we make it here, Plessy decides that it is time to be up right now. We head on over to the flag, and by now you know that this part of the flag isn't going to work, so we hop on to where the flag should be, Mario slides across, the camera zooms under the floorboards, and we get an interesting view of Mario not looking at the camera with the course clear message popping up. World 1-5 is next. I tried making one of these springs that launch you upside down, and it pushes you away from the center when you press the jump button while you're on it. These bee enemies called sting bees don't want to be rotated, but they can't appear below the level, as you can see some of them popping out from the floor right now. And you can actually lure them away like this, and then they can't enter back into the platform where they were below the ground. You'll notice that the clover in the background here is upside down, and because of some weird overlap of hitboxes, you're not able to activate any of these switches in the back row when you walk over them now, so you can't continue into the level. I moved the clover wall farther back, and you can now see some of the stairs, so you can tell that this clover wall has been moved back, but it is still upside down. And now this wall is pushed back, and you can step on these switches and activate them and go farther into the level. We head on to the final part of the level, and this becomes a guessing game of where you're going to end up and what the camera will look like when you grab the flagpole. Mario goes behind the level, we have a diagonal camera angle, and Mario clears another course. The World 1 castle is next. I made these exploding soccer balls upside down and floating, and nothing happens until you reach them, and once you hit them, they work just like normal. I was curious to see how the upside down thwomps would work. I tried to get underneath them in this small gap here, but I couldn't get in there as Big Mario. So I tried taking damage and trying to get back in again. Little Mario could fit into this small gap, and I thought he'd be safe, but at the last moment, it looks like March 31st did happen after all. I was wondering what it'd be like if we went on top of this thwomp, which is now the bottom of the thwomp. And it turns out that when you stand here, you're pushed away from the center as you stand on it. This is similar to the way that level icons in the world map work if you add them to a regular level, which we looked at in my past video where I added the world map to regular levels. Let's head to Bowser now. This cutscene is looking a little weird. Okay, Bowser's not upside down, but his car is now floating. I wonder what's going to happen after Bowser roars. He's going backwards, and he's pushing Mario back. Why is he throwing exploding soccer balls the wrong way? Oh, and then Mario dies. I wasn't ready to give up just yet, so I made my way back to Bowser and did this. I did a jump around him, and then a cat dive back to the level, and I was able to get on the correct side of Bowser. Now I can hit back some of these exploding soccer balls back at Bowser. It's a bit weird to see Bowser from these camera angles, and the camera is sometimes letting us see through Bowser. At a certain point, Bowser goes so far back that even if I hit the soccer balls back towards him, they explode on the invisible wall before they get back to him, so I can't damage Bowser any further. I wanted to try running along to the end of the highway to see if the warp box would spawn and if that would reset Bowser, but when I made it to the end of the highway, there was no warp box spawning. When I made my way back to Bowser, he was still behind the invisible wall here. So let's try readjusting Bowser's angle and let's try this again. Okay, this time there's no road appearing during the cutscene. Here comes Bowser, driving on the air, and he's coming towards the road, so that's good. Now he's driving towards me at a weird angle. I try to get around him again, but the hitbox is too wide. I can't make it around him, so Mario falls. I make my way back to Bowser again. I think it'd be better to go around him on the right side instead of the left side because he's driving towards the left, and this time I'm able to get around Bowser. He's throwing some soccer balls, but because of the weird camera angle, it's really hard to hit them back at Bowser. But after a moment, I am able to get one back at him. We might have a chance at defeating Bowser if he stays around this area and I can keep hitting the soccer balls back at him. But then, he starts to stay here and he's just dumping exploding soccer balls into the ocean. Why are you doing this, Bowser? Why are you throwing exploding soccer balls into the ocean? When I tried to get closer, he ran away, so there was nothing I could do again. Let's try changing Bowser's camera angle, and let's see what happens this time. The camera zooms up, and Bowser is driving towards the Earth like a comet falling from the sky. Ah. 
and oh my goodness, Bowser is driving into the ground. What in the world is happening? How did he do it? Why did he do it? Where did he go? I have so many questions about this. Needless to say, we couldn't beat Bowser like this, so let's try giving him a different angle. No road is appearing in the cutscene again, Bowser's car is still flying, and oh, he drives up through the ground, he's heading on up this time! Now we have the opposite problem, instead of driving into the ground, Bowser is flying away. I was determined to get a strange Bowser angle to work, so I tried turning him around. Bowser is going backwards now, and he's pretty high up, so I'm being careful to not get too close to him. When you go closer to Bowser, he gets faster and faster as he moves away from you, so I'm trying to keep my distance and launch the soccer balls back at him. There's a certain point where he stops throwing soccer balls, and you have to get closer to him, so I get closer and Bowser keeps moving on up. Eventually, I'm trying to jump up high to trigger Bowser to keep moving backwards, because he's way too high to reach with the soccer balls. I'm hoping his position will reset when we get to the warp box. IF the warp box even spawns. But luckily for us, when we get close to this gap, Bowser is programmed to jump to a certain position, so he comes back down. I've got to be really careful because I'm Little Mario, so one more hit will kill me. I'm avoiding the fire, trying to get the soccer balls back at Bowser, and looking for an opportunity like I'm trying to win the World Cup right now. I get a few more hits on Bowser with the exploding soccer balls, and when we make it to where the warp box should be, the warp box does spawn. I miss a great opportunity with the soccer ball, and I realize that we're approaching the area where a Goomba has a Super Bell power-up. I'm thinking that power-up could really help right now, so I go for it. We're able to run past Bowser because he's up high so he doesn't stop us, and we get the power-up. Bowser's hitbox almost pushes us off the level, but we make it back because we have the cat suit. We get in front of him, we launch one soccer ball at him, he launches a few fireballs at us, we're doing well, and he throws one more soccer ball, and we hit it back at Bowser, and Bowser is finally defeated. I head into the final warp box, and we head towards possibly the most interesting flag of all. When you get close to the flag, a cutscene trigger plays, and the camera is partially below the level. You can also notice that the Bowser symbol on the flag is upside down. Walking into the bottom of the flag doesn't work, so I head on up the steps as if we're really jumping to the top of the flag. Mario climbs to the top, he teleports to below the level, and then I just realized that the Sprixie wasn't in the glass jar all along. The glass jar is actually down here. The glass jar shatters, and now the Sprixie must be free somewhere up there we can't see because of the camera, and Mario dances, and the course clear music plays. If you'd be interested in seeing other levels or bosses made upside down, you can click the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out. I'd love to make a follow up to this video if there's interest in that. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the creation of my YouTube content, and a big thank you to you for watching this video. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and take care everybody.